Alrighty, welcome to a cube draft here on channelfireball.com. These are brought to you by Ultimate Guard, a sponsor of Team CFB, and by Mana Crypt, sponsor of our first pick. Mana Crypt is one of the top 15 cards in the cube, maybe top 10, depending on how you rate it next to Moxon. I like Mox a little more because I think the life does matter, but when you're comparing to Moxes and you're not sure which is better, or at least there's some question, it means you're in good territory. We're not going to wheel any of like the really good cards. He's five, six, seven. But I think Paradoxical Outcome and Plateau both have decent shots of coming back. All right, what do we got next here? Um, okay, so next, I have really been liking the Artifact deck in this. So Battle Ball is interesting. I actually don't think Entomb and Mana Crypt are a good pick together. Same with Nightmare. Nightmare is a little better because obviously this has two colorless in its cost, but I think Reanimator uses Mana Crypt extremely poorly. The Reanimator deck is all one mana and two mana spells, and the life total matters a lot, so I actually don't think you should take Entomb here. It's not a good way to maximize Mana Crypt. I think I'm going to just take Steam Vents because likewise, you could take Skyclave and go White Weenie. White Weenie uses Mana Crypt just fine, even if Skyclave doesn't. Wouldn't really recommend Rafelos. I think Steam Vents goes quite well with uh, the, the crypt. Ooh. So now there's Emrakul to Aeon's Torn. Well, if you pick that, you're looking to pick up mostly Sneak Attack or Through the Breach, but also Channel. There's a Talisman. Talismans and Mana Crypts work out pretty nicely. It lets you convert, accelerate even more and convert Colorless into Colored Mana. There's also Mystic Forge and Verdant Catacombs, though Verdant goes not well with Steep Vents. I think I'm going to take Mystic Forge. I love the Mono Artifact deck, and it's red-blue a lot of the time, and Mystic Forge is actually quite strong. So let's take Mystic Forge. Look, we'll follow it up with an Everflowing Chalice with Reservoir in the pack. Passing on a Pest Infestation and mostly cards that are not that good. And uh, what you're trying to do with this deck, the combo with Mystic Forge is A, just playing a ton of artifacts in your deck, so you get to play it just as a future site. B, Sensei's Divining Top. With a Mystic Forge and a top out, at any point you can tap the top, draw a card, and then just recast the top. So you permanently have, I mean, as long as those two are in play, one mana draw a card. But if you then combine it with a Foundry Inspector or Helm of Awakening or the three mana Urza, the blue-white one, that makes artifacts cost one less, now you can just draw your whole deck because you can just keep tapping the top and then playing it for zero mana off the top thanks to Mystic Forge and the cost reducer. So that's a pretty nice little combo. Currently our curve is like land, zero, two, or I guess two, four. Well, there's a spot for one and three right now. So cards I'm really looking for here. Teleron Academy is the most important card. I would take it over, I think everything, even Tinker. Retrofitter Foundry is really good. And if you get Retrofitter Foundry, Guy's Cradle becomes really good. You can also pick up, obviously, Tinker is very strong. Uh, mana Accelerant. So any any sort of busted Mana Accelerant, of course, like Moxes and Sol Ring and stuff, you're not going to get past those. But finding uh, cheap ones is really good. Ooh, I actually like Memory Jar in this deck. And then uh, Mishal's Workshop's a big one. Goblin Welder could actually wheel. This pack is pretty good. All of these cards are playable. And Triplicate Titan can be good if you've got Welder Tinker stuff. Good. But I think Memory Jar is stronger to start out with. Oh, and here I'll take Walking Ballista. You generate a lot of mana, and Ballista is a perfect way to spend it. Uh, over Sword of Fire Ice. Yeah, Celestial Colony, whatever. Yes, there's also the combos with Zerda, the companion that you know rewards your activated abilities. It makes Grim Monolith or Basalt Monolith into infinite. Oh, here though, I am going to take Arid Mesa because I have a Steam Vents. And this deck, if it ever sees balance, is just always slams it. Plus, Black Green Talisman is the lowest tier of the Talismans. So I think Arid Mesa is, is a good follow up here. This pack is kind of a miss. I might take Holebreaker Horror. With two zeros, this goes infinite. You keep bouncing each other. So Mana Crypt and Chalice gets infinite Storm, infinite Colorless Mana. I also don't think I'm going to play any of these except maybe March. I think specking on a Horror is fine. Other things you're looking for, Kinon Bonder Prodigy is hard to cast. It's blue-green, but it makes Grim Mon or a Basalt Monolith go infinite. It actually breaks even with Grim. Welder and Duretti are okay, but I, I don't find that part of the deck to be all that strong. Um, you also have just random blue card draw. Okay, so Paradox Gotham Wield, 
Wow, I, I am bad at predicting Glorybringer, Baleful Strix, Path, and maybe Witness, but certainly Path, Strix, and Glorybringer I thought were going to be gone. So the problem with Baleful Strix is Blue Black's kind of hard to cast. I actually am going to take the outcome here. I think with once you have Mana Crypt, Paradoxical Outcome becomes a lot, a lot stronger. I'll take Inferno Titan. So like the Hole Breaker, I'm not really looking to play those. Oh, I don't mind Odawara. It's a kind of free uh, disruption. Don't think I'm playing any of these cards. Oh, a Sacred Foundry I will take though. That's that's helps us fix white mana. For our as of yet non-existent white cards, I think I'd rather have Wanderer. Though not that likely to. So we have a good combo-y start for artifacts. We're missing some of the cards that we want, of course, but we have a good mana base to start with. And here we opened, oh, we opened Mana Drain. I would be really happy if I wield Sahili. It's really good in this deck. But Mana Drain, if your mana can support it, which this deck is looking very good for that, is excellent. Mana Drain into any of these expensive cards is really good. So Mana Drain, and what's going to go? I mean, obviously it's a little harder to predict here, but there's a chance Sahili comes back or Karn. I don't know that it's like guaranteed. It's far from guaranteed. I mean, obviously it's not guaranteed, but, uh, you know, there's a possibility. Is PO playable? Paradoxical outcome without multiple mocks in? Yeah. You have to just have a lot of cheap and, and free artifacts, which we don't quite yet. So here, I'm not going to take Marsh Flats or Triome or Brainstorm. I'm Basically, you got to decide Mana Leak or Talisman of Creativity. I think with this current setup, I want Talisman. You don't want that many non-artifact cards for Forge. Talisman's good with Outcome, Mana Crypt, and it's the Talisman of the colors we are. Let's go ahead and take Talisman here. This next pack, oh, Retrofitter Foundry. So this card really does want Urza or Academy or Cradle to really make it pop off, but it's a cheap artifact that spits out a bunch of tokens. <laughs> it's very strong. So let's just take Retrofitter and I don't, I don't really care about even getting any of these cards back. Oh, there's Basalt Monolith. So it's a nice mana generation that also if we can pick up a Zerda goes infinite, but also just is good at just playing a mana rock and accelerating up. It's good with outcome too. Just generates a lot of mana though. I guess recasting it can be a drag. Take that over Preordain. Oh, and there's Delirian Academy. We're doing it. We got, what pick is this? <laughs> uh, uh, fifth pick, Telerian Academy. All right, we're, we're, we're on our way to an all-timer here. This is This is looking like the perfect artifact deck. And uh, I am extremely happy. So I'm uh, looking to pick up more zeros, more more uh, cheap artifacts. But as long as we just pick up artifacts, our deck's gonna end up pretty busted. Like we've got we've got a lot of what we want here. Like we have one of our best engine cards, two actually. Mystic Forge is really good here too, and we have the mana generation of Academy and uh, Mana Crypt. Also, if someone opens a Misha's Workshop, I imagine we'll get it pretty late. Not playing any of these cards, could play Consider, though I'm not sure. So now here there's Ponder, but there's also Zernorb. And that may sound crazy, but Zernorb's a zero mana artifact for Academy and Outcome. You can play it off the top with Mystic Forge. And if you pick up Balance, Balance Zernorb is really good. So I'm gonna take Zernorb because you just don't want that many cantrips in your deck anyway. I'll take Shark Typhoon and probably not play it here. There's also the Weathered Wayfarer. So if you have fewer lands than them, you can activate it and go get Academy. I guess I'm just not going to play a Shark Typhoon in this deck. So I think I could see myself, if my mana is good enough, I could see playing Weathered Wayfarer. All right, so Sahili didn't wheel, but Karn did. And Karn is really good here too. You get to minus it to make a Construct. And I don't need Hallowed Fountain. I'm not, it's not clear I'm playing any white cards anyway. I guess I'll take Raugrin Triumph because you never know. Hard evidence puts an artifact into play. <laughs> and, and a crab. And well, I'm really not playing Dig in this deck. I guess I'll take just take Elspeth. Oh, Solitude with three cards left. What is going on? Uh, I'm gonna take Urza. It makes your artifacts instance and sorceries less to cast. <laughs> So, sure, someone can have a, a a second to last pick solitude. All right, 
Pack three. Can we get a soul ring? All we need is soul ring. <laughs> if we just get a soul ring, we're 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 pretty happy. We're happy already. So don't even have a single red card we want to play. Arid Mesa can get Steam Vents or Sacred Foundry and be well, I guess it would just play Steam Vents. You'd play Arid Mesa Planes and Steam Vents as a blue white fixer. Um so this pack has Caracas, it has the Cradle, it has Dak Faden, it has Goldspan Dragon. Siggy, I would have taken a mana vault. Um what am I gonna do? I, I don't think I'm supposed to take Talisman here. So the advantage to Gaia's Cradle is it does really go off with uh with with Retrofitter, but I already have Academy, so I'm less inclined to do that. I think I'm actually gonna take Chrome Host Seed Shark. Chrome Host Seed Shark with Academy also goes off, and uh I have a lot of spells to plas cast, especially with like paradoxical outcome. I would love to pick up a candelabra. And there's a chance brain freeze wheels, though I don't know how likely that is. Okay, so in here we've got Helm of Awakening. We also have Gitaxian Probe. I mean, I want the Helm a lot more than the Probe. I don't even really care about the Probe. I'm just gonna take the card I want and not and not try to wheel it. I think that it, there's just. I, I understand the Helm probably does wheel, but like, I just don't know. If it was a card I would play. That's one thing. I'm not sure that I would even want Probe. The problem is the more non-artifacts you play, the more it messes up your Mystic Forge. So there's just no real reason to do that. Uh, hard Evidence could make the cut here if I as a possibility, but like I'm hoping to pick up enough artifacts that I can cut a lot of these. Wow, no artifacts in this pack either. At least Frantic Search on Taps Academy. Yeah, Sensei's Divining Top, I would take over basically anything at this point. So... Foundry Inspector is already gone. That was in one of the impact two. Yes, technically some of those cards are artifacts. Cool. Uh, do I want Talisman or Simulacrum? I think I just want Talisman. Just the two drop artifacts are better with Paradoxical Outcome, especially with Helm. Uh, ramping is better. I already have a bunch of good four mana plays. There's also an Ulabog there, which I wouldn't mind. Oh, this pack has upheaval. I think I that one is good enough. I think I take upheaval is kind of how you win. This is how I win. This is fifth pick. Yeah, I still have three more picks to get some more artifacts. And this pack, <laughs> mind twist, Uthari, Narset. There's also wasteland. There's also city of traders. City of traders is pretty good. Just playing it as your last land. Gets you a lot of mana. Do I want Narset in this deck? Narset's also not terrible. I don't have Time Spiral though. Let's see, this is 25. I mean, I'll have enough playables because I have cards in there. I mean, at this point, I, I Hullbreaker Horror and Hard Evidence could make the cut too. I think I would rather just have City of Traders here. Oh, well, there's a win condition. Fourth Eorlingus. Yeah, just the seventh pick, fourth Eorlingus. All right. There's also a Force of Will, but yeah, we'll, we'll take this card. We have a good mana for it. Oh, and there's a Thran Dynamo. Perfect. That's exactly what we were looking for. Eighth pick Thran Dynamo. Goldspan Wield, and I might consider playing that as well. Did I end up with any white cards? Oh, uh, Urza and Fourth Theater Lingus. Yes, I did. So I guess Sea Chrome Coast is probably fine then. So this is 18 land right now. How many artifacts? One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. With Karn, thirteen plus the Seed Shark. All right, not bad. I have no artifacts in my sideboard that I could play. I could play Weather Wayfarer. I, could, I guess I could play the the Crab. Hard evidence if I need to. How do you kill people? This deck has so many win conditions. <laughs> you know, Fiery Confluence is great, but that's not what we're looking to be doing. It probably should have been taken by then. I think it's kind of a bomb, but. I can kill them with Fourth Year Lingus, Walking Ballista, Chrome Host Seed Shark, Upheaval, Karn. Ooh, Snap is interesting. I don't know that I'll have room for it because right now I'm playing. I guess that's 17 land if I add all lands now. Yeah, yeah, I could, I could see doing that. Um, what am I more likely to side in? I think I'm more likely to side in Bone Crusher. Yeah. 
Win conditions are not really something I'm too worried about. I think I want Hole Breaker Horror over Snap. And then 17 lands here. I think Gold Span's also good. So piles by color. Oh, I have one red card, or one red white card, one white blue card, and one red card. And I have a tri land, a tri land, dual land, dual land, dual land, dual land, and then Academy's blue, of course. I didn't think Brain Freeze was that likely to win, but we don't really need it. Like, I would have liked a few more artifacts, but I guess at least consider. Oh, maybe Hard Evidence is better than consider. Because they're both cantrips, but this leaves an artifact in play if I don't want to crack the cantrip. Lottery Grave play Lingering Souls. No, that sounds like a really bad idea. Um, right now I have one, two, three, four white sources for two white cards. Oh, I have a blue-red artifact, or blue-red. Wait, hold on. Which one's Hierarchy? Black-white. Oh, it's even another white one. We never saw Mightstone. We would have taken it probably. All right, so I guess I have enough white sources, most likely. And red sources, one, two, three, four, five, six red sources. Two mountains is eight. And then if I do six islands, I'll have six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 blue, 14 blue. All right. I think this is good, and I don't think I want to cut any of these non-artifacts for snap. Or consider. Ah, uh, you know what? Maybe I cut Urza. I didn't get the Sensei's top. It's not an artifact. I didn't get the Meek Stone. Yeah, let's just do that. And I think I'll just play Consider as another way to just try to assemble our combos. All right. Yeah, let's fire this off. Snap is good with Academy, but I already have Frantic Search to untap Academy, and I don't want to, to optimize too much for having Tolarian Academy in play because I think this deck is going to have a pretty high win percentage in games where it has Tolarian Academy in play. At least that's my uh, that's that's my theory here. I have Bone Crusher, Inferno Titan as decent sideboard cards. If I wanted to go deeper into white, I could play the the White Planeswalkers. So this deck did get a lot of the pieces I look for in an artifact deck. It was a little lighter. Like if I could cut Consider and Hard Evidence for two more artifacts, there just weren't artifacts in the packs. I very rarely took a non-artifact over an artifact. Like, I, I took Fourth Year Lingus and Upheaval, I think, over Artifacts. But almost everything else, I just took Artifacts instead. Uh, oh, I guess I took Chrome Host Seed Shark, but that kind of counts. That makes Artifacts, too. In terms of acceleration, we have Mana Crypt and City of Traders as, like, zero acceleration. And then Chalice and Two Talismans and Basalt Moth and Dynamo is, like, one acceleration you have to pay for. Yeah, that seems totally fine. I like where we're at. Let's see. Uh, let's see what we can we can find a face here. And I think that uh, I think having mana drain is pretty nice. Plus, like upheaval and fourth year lingus are both some pretty good big mana win conditions here. I have liked Zerda in this cube. I would put Zerda in this deck, for example. It makes Basalt Monolith better. Like, it's infinite mana with Basalt Monolith, but also it makes Retrofitter cheaper to use. It only costs one to untap it. And there's one more that... Oh, but Walking Ballista, it only costs two to put a counter on it. So, all right. I will keep this hand. So what this hand is going to do is turn one, tap Steam Vents. Turn two, Seacrum Coast, play a Ballista for two. And I think that that's going to be good. All right. Uh, Steam ends. My opponent mold is six here. In the dark, I wouldn't play Moxes on turn one because I think there's more ways to punish them on board. If you know you're playing against black, you do. Of course, Mana Crypt, you don't really want to take damage. Oh, this is... <laughs> they played a turn one bird. This is going to be even better. Now I'm going to get to play the Ballista for two and also pick off the bird while I'm at it. Basalt Monolith. That's not a bad draw. Okay, Ballista for two. Yoink. Take that, Birds of Paradise. And pass the turn. Next turn, I could play Basalt Monolith. I could play Frantic Search. Honestly, I might just pump the Ballista. <laughs> we'll see what we draw. It's like I played a Flame Tongue Kavu, except I'm, I'm left with a 1-1 one, one instead of a 4-2. But this 1-1 this, this one, one can go pretty hard if I start generating a lot of mana. 
Like, imagine I draw Teleron Academy next turn. Then what do I do? I guess I could play B the Basalt Monolith Academy, pump Ballista, attack for two, and then next turn I can I can just kill them by playing no other spells. <laughs> Hex Drinker's their play? <laughs> their best play is play another X one? Uh, okay. I guess that's fine. <laughs> I'll play a land. I'm just gonna put a counter on Ballista. Then remove a counter to kill that. I mean, I guess I've spent six mana to kill their two creatures, but I think that's okay. I've got the mana crypt, so I have extra mana to spare. Is it a Rex Age? No, it's a Green Sun Zenith for another creature that I'm gonna get to kill. I guess if they get like a two toughness creature, I don't get to do it for free. Oh, Sakura Tribe Elder, immune to the predations of Walking Ballista. All right, Sponzi, all right, all right. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's the Academy. Okay, Salt Monolith. Now it's time to Frantic Search. Mm -hmm. Frantic Search. Yeah, I'll discard those two, untap these three. I think I'm just going to kill with Ballista this game. Uh, let's go Dynamo. And I guess I attack with the Ballista. No, I'll just pass. They're going to sack the Elders. No reason to tap my mana now. So right now I've got enough mana to double pump Ballista. I mean, if they kill the Walking Ballista, I guess I'm kind of out of gas, but I guess I even have Udawara. Uh, sure. Wow, Oracle Fetch Land. Nice. If they crack the Fetch, I'm killing Oracle in response, I think. Okay, they did not. I have yet to have priority to kill that Oracle. The good thing about them just playing a land from hand with, and not cracking Fetch is A, I don't care about Ugin. Ugin's actually pretty bad against me. Uh, B, Next turn, I get to attack with the Ballista for a lot of damage. All right. Put two counters on that. Flip. Mana Crypt lose the flip. So right now, five, six, seven, eight. So I guess I don't need to play the Sacred Foundry. Yeah. So I'm just going to attack. They can chump if they want. All right. Let's... Uh, Put a counter on it. I, th I think... Do I leave up Odawara? Uh, I think I do, because I want to... If I need to bounce Ballista, that's going to be pretty important. All right, so take take five. Pass the turn. I'm going to see draw step. If they have a land on top, yeah, then I'm going to kill the Oracle. I mean, I was probably going to kill it anyway, because... I guess if I was going to kill it anyways, then maybe I should have just killed it because now they get to crack their heath to not draw a forest. But I think that uh, this is fine. So next turn I have lethal here, right? Because I go up to four and then I pump to seven, attack for seven, shoot for seven. So I didn't need to pump it an additional time right now. And then if they do play like a Reclamation Sage or something along those lines, Acidic Slime, I, I really don't want the Walking Ballista to die. They have Ugin and two unknowns in hand. It's like a prime time or something. Oh, do they redraw the green suns? Oh, finale for four. Okay. What are they going to get for four mana? I mean, questing beast, I guess. Something else to die in the maw of the ballista. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now they have Ugin and Unknown. Thing is, they can play Ugin. The minus doesn't do anything. Um, and then the, the plus doesn't kill the Ballista. So let's say I bounce Questing Beast. They're at 13. The next turn, I can pump it one, two, three, four times, right? Oh, no, this is not a tap. So hmm. I can pump it three times. I attack for six. 
And they have Ugin and an unknown in hand. I kind of feel like I do that. I think it just wastes too much of my ballista the equity here to, to, to shoot the questing beast four times. I could also just draw fourth the Orlingus and uh, end the game that way, but I have drawn all lands. I, I did frantic search into Dynamo and lands, then drew two lands in a row after that. But unless they have something, they have one card I don't know, and they're going to draw one card. So those two cards have to be a destroy target artifact card, or they're in a pretty good amount of trouble. Because now they're just dead even if I don't attack next turn. I just punt, shoot Ballista and kill them. Ugin does nothing. They can't even cast it. Ballista, Questing Beast does nothing. Their best play last turn was to go get Questing Beast. So yeah. All right. Uh, against that, I actually do want Inferno Titan. And that would make me want to cut... I don't think I want to cut any of the, the high end. Maybe I just cut the Consider... Do I have enough red without changing it? One, two, three, four, five, six. I could probably swap one red. All we did that game was Ballista, Ballista and we did we did Channel Odawara. We played Mana, Ballista, and Channel Odawara. We did cast like a Frantic Search and, and whatever, but like the only things that we did to interact was cast Channel Odawara and play a Walking Ballista. Uh, yeah, people still pretty good against green in this deck, I think. Upheaval is going to be my way to win when they have their good draw and spit out a bunch of stuff. If I if I can just upheaval with two mana floating or something, often that's going to be enough. Bone Crusher is also a potential sideboard for sure. I could uh, maybe take out I could take out Zern Orb and Outcome. I kind of like those two together. Uh, I don't really need to keep a one land hand here. I will keep this, and I guess here I put back the Inferno Titan. It's just the most expensive card. I feel like that's not going to work out. Oh, geez. Okay. Oh, geez. <laughs> All right. Well, this is we're not winning this game, I don't think. I mean, barring a barring a Mana Crypt Academy draw very quickly here, this is going to be tough. I mean, it's possible their hand is just more lands because sometimes these decks can flood out, but yeah, I mean, Deep Root Wayfinder, Cradle, yeah, they, they have all land so far. Okay, Helm of Awakening is actually not a crazy card to play at some point here, but I think I'll just play Talisman to start. All right, next turn, all I need to do is draw Tolerian Academy, and we're really doing it. They do get to now Surveil 1, so hopefully they don't hit Strip Mine. Hopefully they don't hit a good spell. I want to hit like a land or elf or something. A bad spell that isn't a land for them to bring back. All right, they kept a card on top. I don't like seeing that. It means next turn they're going to do something. Odawara. So how do I do this? Um, I could play Karn, make a thing. I think what I'm going to do, I don't think I, I, I'm going to concern myself with making their things cheaper. I just don't see how that could 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 really matter here given how much mana they have and now i can play karn and make a 4-4 immediately hey what up timrod how's it going bud this way they don't get another deep root wayfinder attack and next turn i can play shark and then play a chalice to make like a 4-4 or something like that i guess if i draw land there's a lot of cards that they left on top that could just kill me. Oh, that was not it. Oh, I'm glad I made this a 4-4. They kept Questing Beast. That's like the perfect card because they kept it on top because it was better than just a random card, but it's definitely not good enough to win the game here. All right, they're going to hit me with both. Yeah, well, I'm going to block the Questing Beast. That's basically a forced block. All right, well, they get to Deep Root here. Oh, this is Kicker, right? This also makes a 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> true enough, true enough. Hey, what up, Colossal Dreadmaw? <laughs> they hit Lenor Elves. That's the exact card I wanted them to hit. <laughs> oh, th that is excellent. All right. Let's see. Or oh, is Multi-Kicker count towards... Yeah, we're going to find out. I'm going to cast it either way. Ooh, Fourth Year Lingus. I can't cast it right now, but... Unfortunately, I didn't draw a land to cast a big shark. 
are a big thing, but I'm going to cast this multi kicker of one. And then let's find out what this makes. Looks like a zero zero. Well, it makes us no talk a token with no counters. Yes. And let's just make a six six past the turn here. All right. Well, now white mana is good. The other thing is if I plus Karn, there's a pretty good chance. Uh, let's see. I was going to draw a memory jar. Well, that was probably enough. Plus Karn and see those. Yeah. All right. Nice little one dub. St strong start. I mean, what happened to them was exactly what I said could happen. Green led with 10 mana and then had no spells. Uh, this looks like a mulligan to me. That hand has nothing good going on. Oh, this hand is definitely a keep. Um, hmm. What do I put back? The thing is, Zernor effectively taps for a mana here. How crazy is it to put back fourth Eorlingus or Island? Uh... I'm not 100% sure. I think I'm going to put Island back. Because this, this, I think, maximizes the chance that I uh, can, can Mystic Forge pretty quickly. And I don't really want to put back such a good card. All right. Play this tapped. Yeah, I'm going to play this Urnorb. Look, if, they, if they're going to Wasteland me, at least I'll uh, gain two life. And the, th the thing is, with Academy... Drawing any artifact is also good, so lands or artifacts are both fine. Let's hold off on playing Academy here. The, the thing is, if I play Academy, they'll they'll prioritize killing the Walking Ballista, whereas they might not uh, do that otherwise. I mean, they might still, but but we'll see, I guess. Because now, if they don't if they don't kill it right away, I just go Academy immediately, cast Mystic Forge. Looks like they are killing Walking Blister. There's not many cards for single red that don't <laughs> that aren't doing that. Oh, bl blue is different. I don't even know what this is. Oh, Pentad Prism for two. Okay. Yeah, I think putting back Island makes the most sense. Oh, um, we're gonna we're gonna wait on this <laughs> on this Mystic Forge now. Drawing Mana Drain is one of the few draws I could have where I don't want to cast that. Because now I'm going to pass, because they played a Pentad Prism too. This very much signifies they're looking to accelerate something big out, which hopefully they do this turn. The other thing is if they don't do anything, I can just pump the Ballista. So hopefully they do something. I would like them to tap out so I can go Mana Drain into Mystic Forge. I don't think casting Mystic Forge there makes sense. If they have a big instant to play here, then that's fine too. Fatal push. Okay, sure. All right. That's not a big deal. I can't cast Mystic Forge this turn, but again, because of the Mana Drain, I wasn't really looking to. Oh, now we have a better plan than Mana Drain into Mystic Forge. <laughs> We're just going to Mana Drain into Fourth Year Lingus and, not, and barely be an artifact deck. <laughs> All right, here we go. Bitter Reunion. Mm. All right. I'm just going to Mana Drain that. I don't really want to just say draw go here. And I'm not that worried about them having a counter. Uh, Frantic Search doesn't generate mana right now, so let's not do it. White and red. X is four. Fourth, your Lingus, take eight. <laughs> You're at 10. And then I draw Chalice. And now, if they deal with the tokens, I'm still drawing two a turn, and they're dead very quickly. Fourth Year Lingus is a messed up card. There's a reason this is good in Legacy. Are we storming? We're not exactly storming, Reach. We're, we're playing an artifact deck, though. It does have Frantic Search in it and Mystic Forge. So I, I can get a pretty good spell count. Destroy target artifact, deal two to everything. Eh, all right. I mean, that's about as good as it gets, and it's still pretty good for me here. Land, normal land would have been nice there. Uh, do I, actually, you know what? 
I'm actually just going to, let's see, if I play this for one mana, I'm actually going to cast this for zero, cast and just cast Mystic Forge. I think that generally is going to be better. Uh, do I want to draw Talisman? Eh, I don't really even want to draw Talisman. No, I do want to draw Talisman. That's fine. I can just pass because I'll draw it end of turn. Yeah, and then next turn we're going to have a really good turn here if they don't kill Mystic Forge. Honestly, even if they do, I'm I'm still pretty happy. Oh, no plays here. What card goes infinite with Basalt Monolith? Uh, Kinnon, because it makes a tap for four mana. Let's do this. Playing Chalice is mana neutral. Playing it for one is mana neutral. Playing Chalice for zero is mana plus one. Basically, they both put an artifact into play. One adds more mana. Uh, let's go. Basalt Monolith. Tap this for three, Talisman. Tap this for a bunch of mana, Frantic Search. Pretty decent chance that I end up... Uh, see, this is why the hard evidence is bad. <laughs> Funny. I think I discard Goldspan Dragon and Dynamo, because I think Jar is going to be a lot better. Tap, 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 play Jar. And I think I just wait here. I don't think I'm going to get as good of a turn if I wait. Oh, upheaval? Well, I'm just going to do that then instead. If they don't do something really good this turn, we're just going to upheaval here. I think there's no reason to, to do otherwise. Oh, retrofitter is mana neutral. Oh, mana crypt. <laughs> All right, yeah, this is, uh, this is where this deck goes. I guess I'll tap Mystic Forge. How good is Crab post upheaval? Really strong. Um, yeah, tap that. Uh, <laughs> tap that chalice for zero upheaval. <laughs> oh yeah, I could have even untapped basalt with academy. Oh, they are so dead here. <laughs> Mana crypt. Just play basalt. Play crab. Everflowing Chalice, cast Multi-Kicker for three. No, I don't need to jar up people here. I think we'll I think we'll be just fine. Let's go Talisman. It makes a crab and a clue. It's the blue Thraben Inspector, Craven Inspector. Play Academy, tap it for millions of mana. Exile my island. Just another island? Okay. Um Just make a dork. All right, go. I just got to replay all my cards. See, this is why I'm saying like upheaval is my win condition. I just get to like cast upheaval. They go, go down to one land, discard a bunch of cards. I mean, they might be able to discard their big creature that they were hoping to discard with Bitter Reunion, assuming that's what they're doing. Nope, they just discarded a bunch of lands. All right. Hallbreaker Horror, huh? Let's tap this, crack a clue. Uh, tap Mystic Forge. Sure, we'll play Hullbreaker Horror. And then we can cast Memory Jar and bounce the Mana Crypt Jar. Uh, I mean, I guess I could make infinite mana by bouncing a uh, chalice and make infinite tokens. It would just take a little while. Uh, I kind of want to like preemptively put a snap in against their Bitter Reunion deck. Fiery Confluence is going to be annoying. I will say that. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I guess go broken is what, you, is what you're going to do. Just take hard evidence out. I think that's just generally my weakest card. All right. Let's see what they've got. 
This hand is pretty bad. It just doesn't do anything for a long time. I think we're going to mulligan this. I mean, this is the same hand, <laughs> but we put in a retrofitter foundry instead of an upheaval, but I guess we're on six now. I'll put the snap back and pass. They also mulligan in the Inquisition my retrofitter. Dang. All right. Not much else I can do there. I guess I'll just hope to draw. A, any of my two drop accelerants will get me to a turn three Mystic Forge, which is decent. I mean, we both mulligan. They cast Inquisition. So, like, we're both on, like, fairly low resource games here. Bitter Reunion, sure. Discard Gristlebrand. I don't like that. That That is not good. Helm of Awakening. All right. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? Most of the cards that reanimate Gristlebrand aren't even that expensive. So playing Helm to play Mystic Forge a turn sooner seems pretty good. Oh, they don't have a reanimate. Okay. They could easily have a uh, Fiery Confluence. And if so, they do. Wow, I just run all. I do helm and all lands. I do land for turn, exiled land. Now there's a land on top. They cycle Rafine's Tower. I don't feel very good about this position here. Uh, upkeep stop? No, that's not a good plan. I'd rather just draw it because now I can exile my top card and try to hit artifacts. Uh, all right. Well, they did, every turn they don't do anything makes me feel a little better. And I'm about to have Mana Drain if they don't do something this turn. So, I mean, they have yet to actually do anything in any of these games, which is definitely... I'm going to go to my second main because I'm not going to protect Basalt Monolith against a counter, so... Uh, I'm also not going to... Oh, I actually should have played Mountain. I wanted to keep Triple Blue up in case of Wasteland, but maybe playing Mountain's better. Uh, we'll mana drain that. I'm not getting much mana, mana out of it because now I have to play Mountain to play the Gold Span. Why not upkeep Exile? Because Exile on my top card is like getting me closer to a, getting a bunch of artifacts in a row, which draws me a lot of cards. Uh, yeah, now I'll Exile. Land. Use all that Mana Drain mana to play a, a gold span. The tons of Mana Drain mana. Actually, yeah, actually I had to play an extra land because of that. So that actually makes the Frantic Search a little worse. Basically, when artifacts are free, exiling on upkeep doesn't really help that much. Okay, Duretti. <laughs> they overpaid because they didn't realize Helm. They made a token. I guess I'm just going to gold span the Duretti unless they, unless they do something to stop me. All right, draw. Exile. Attack Duretti. And I'm going to cast Frantic Search here. I already know that my uh, top card is one I'm going to discard for free. So, and now I have one floating. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the drawback, I guess, of, uh, of attacking first. Uh, sure, we'll pass the turn. Forgot about fourth Eerlingus. Well, next turn I'm going to, Eerlingus is going to, is going to show up pretty big. They can't kill me with Emrakul, at least. I think I could beat an Emrakul here. Can I beat a Triplicate Titan? Yeah, I can beat a Triplicate Titan here. At least I think so. Okay, I go to seven. This dies. They make three tokens. I draw Sacred Foundry. So right now, I can cast Eorlingus for, one, for five, eight, twelve, thirteen. They block Goldspan and three tokens. Yeah, that's... Plenty of damage. This Mystic Forge has been not been impressive this game, I will say that. <laughs> All right. X equals 13. Yeah, Fourth Eolingus is a card draw spell, puts a couple tokens into play, or is just a straight up fireball. Mystic Forge has drawn a card every turn. Every card I exiled is not one I wanted to draw, with the, I guess the exception of Chrome Host Seed Shark. Hey, what up, Mila? Welcome. Uh, 
All right. <coughs> Take 21. <coughs> Excuse me. A little 2040. Let's see if we can get the, the trophy here. Our first trophy. I've been playing mostly on the, on the Team Dress server. <laughs> oh, have we figured out how this deck wins? I think four Theodore Lingus is also... So the top tier of cube cards, I think there's like tier one. Uh, we are actually Sponzi in the sense that we, we have a spreadsheet of uh, how people do in those drafts. Though the trophy leader right now, Hank the Obese. Uh, I don't know Hank, but I'll, I guess I'll take his word for it is the trophy leader and he is the or rather the trophy leader is the trophy leader he's from the he, he plays if you see those uh, team draft videos he's in a lot of those drafts he's taking this month off drafting on the server though he did one draft because we asked him to we're like hank we need another person um to, to try to win the trophy race here all right i would like to play first oh this is a hand okay so how do I do this? Because I think this hand's definitely good. The question is, if I go City of Traders Talisman, then I can go Academy, play Ballista for two, but I lose the City of Traders. I think I'm going to slow roll it a little bit more. And... I don't need to be in a hurry. I don't need to cast upheaval on turn three. Obviously, if I if my opponent's playing mono red or mono white, and I'm like, okay, I need to hurry up a little, that's one thing. Oh, wow, that was actually really good because now I can play Academy and play Talisman because uh, Academy taps for black thanks to Urborg. Basically, what I would like to have happen is have this be the last land I play before upheaval, so I didn't want to play it the first two turns. Stoneforge Mystic. Oh, okay. That I don't mind so much. What are we going to get? Cauldra Complete. Yeah, that's that's the combo, all right. Oh, Mana Crypt. Mm, now I can do this. And I can... Wow. <laughs> I can play a Ballista for four on turn three. <laughs> I guess drawing Mana Crypt is pretty good. X equals four. And this is why Walking Ballista is... A card I prioritized. <laughs> it's just so good at every mana cost and gives you a, a mana sink, which this deck is not, you know, not short on mana. Often we'll have tons of mana in play. And then now, the one thing I'm scared of is they have Urborg, so hand disruption is annoying. But I want to at some point just do a big upheaval here. They showed Cauldra complete to, to the Stoneforge. Honestly, I might upheaval this turn. Let's well. Let's see. What, what do we draw? Mountain. So currently, I have eight mana. So I could upheaval with two floating and basically replay everything. That sounds like it's the safest. There's just no reason to do that. Also, I, I can even do more because the frantic search. So I think I'll just do that. I already have a mountain in my hand. I, and and I don't really care about Odawara. So let's go frantic search. Discard two lands. Untap those three. You know, classic turn four upheavals. <laughs> and yeah, I guess I could have pinged them for one. This is true. Mana Crypt, Retrofitter, Talisman. Uh, let's go make a token because it's kind of cheap to make a token academy seven eight play ballista for four all right your turn <laughs> uh next turn is it lethal let's see five eight ten mana yeah it's lethal i can make ballista into uh oh wait sorry ten mana. That's it's not two per mana. I, I can pump Letha for six. It's not quite lethal, but it is it is uh, going to be a lot of damage. Now they can discard their Cauldra complete at least because it's probably not helping them. Okay. 
Wow, they discarded a talisman. Interesting. Oh, nice. Um, let's go dynamo. So this is 10 mana. So pump ballista, pump ballista, make a retrofitter. Yeah, they, they, they maybe don't want to show me any new cards, I guess. Hey, what up, Space Drift Driver? 94 months. I appreciate you hanging out for, a bit, for that long. Hope you're having a good one. All right. Let's go ahead. We're up a game against who knows what. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could put in Snap because it's pretty good against Cauldra. Sure. Why not? <laughs> that was pretty good. Oh, I should change my title. Yeah, I, I, I did already play against Mingo. Hmm. Okay, what is this? Uh, this is actually a fine hand. They mulliganed, and we have turn one Spire Bluff into Consider, turn two Sea Chrome Coast, and then Mana Drain maybe into into a Dynamo or Fourth Year Lingus or something. Oh man, I would have rather had Crab. Awesome to hear, Space Driver. Hope you're having a good day. I appreciate that. Well, never mind. Maybe the snap is going to be great. They did, in fact, draw the card where I, that I cited in Snap 4. Uh, all right, well, here's where you used Graveyard of the Zern Orb. Wish I kept the Zern Orb now. Look at this. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, I'm just going to snap the, the Cauldra Complete. No real reason to do anything else, I don't think. Yoink. Snap that token. Boom. Hey, what up, Fats Master? All right, draw. Oh, um, that's actually crazy good because now I get to keep up. I was like, oh, I could play Goldspan instead of keeping up Mana Drain, but no, I can just do both. Goldspan Dragon is a card I like a lot. I mean, I'm playing a double red card in this three color mono brown deck just because I think Goldspan is that good. It, it's just a fast clock that puts a ton of mana into play. Infested, sending a message. I love it. Those, those, those fat cat mods have been having too many dinners for free. All right. They get to attack with Stoneforge. I won the flip. Um, let's attack with the dragon or try to, and then play a dynamo and I guess just pass the turn. And at some point I might paradoxical outcome. Wow. If you target the gold span with outcome, you get a treasure. <laughs> that's pretty good. Mm, that's a good point, Molly. When when is the YouTube channel getting a mod dinner program? Oh, they drew their non-white, non-green mana. Time for time to mana drain something. <laughs> hey, what's up, Crystal? Honestly, Titania is not even that big of a threat, but I'm gonna mana drain it anyway. Okay, let's just take. I'm probably gonna cast this outcome, even if I uh, don't draw anything this turn. Oh, well, Helm makes it a lot easier. All right, let's go Helm. Tap, tap, uh, sack this for double red, tap for blue, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Make a token with the dragon. Uh, I have enough to recast the dragon without sacking treasures. Oh, here we go. Let's go blue, blue, holebreaker horror. Mana Crypt, uh, Bounce the Stoneforge. Yeah, they can go fetch up another equipment if they want. Goldspan, Bounce the Mana Crypt. Uh, mana Crypt. Oh, they, where are you going? What, what's happening? <laughs> All right, well, that, that was the artifact deck. That is what that deck is trying to do. And uh, it came together very nicely. Getting the Academy was certainly integral to that. Uh, walking Ballista overperformed, and uh, overall, that draft was as uh, smooth as butter. 
less than an hour start to finish. you love to see it. Thanks for watching. Check out more drafts like this on channelfireball.com and uh, I will see you next time.